Lesson 3-2 covers the properties of parallel lines. Look over the learning goal and scale and see where you are before we start the lesson. The special angle pairs formed by parallel lines and a transversal are congruent, supplementary, or both if the transversal is perpendicular to the parallel lines. Let's look at postulate 3-1, the corresponding angles postulate. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. If you notice, these are congruent angle pairs because the angles are corresponding, meaning they are in the same position, just in a different location along the transversal. In the first set of lines, angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles, so they are congruent. In the second set, angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding, so they are congruent. In the third set, angle 3 and angle 7 are corresponding, so they are congruent. And in the fourth set, angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding, so they are congruent. In example 1, we will be identifying congruent angles. Which angles measure 55? How do you know? Well, let's start by looking for vertical angles. We know that angle 1 is vertical to this 55 degree angle, so it will also be 55 degrees. Next, let's look for alternate interior angles. Since angle 5 is alternate interior angle to the 55 degree angle, it will also be 55 degrees. And finally, let's look for corresponding angles. Since angle 7 is corresponding to the 55 degree angle, we know that it is also 55 degrees. So angles 1, 5, and 7 all have the measure of 55. Pause the video and do you try number 1. In example 1, we said that angle 5 was 55 degrees because it was an alternate interior angle to the 55 degree angle here. Well, they want to know if we can find another way to justify that. Let's take a look. Since angle 7 is corresponding to the 55 degree angle and angle 5 is vertical to angle 7, we know that angle 5 is 55 degrees. In part B, we are asked to use linear pairs to find the measure of angle 4. Since the 55 degree angle and angle 4 are a linear pair, we know that if we add 55 to the measure of angle 4, we will get 180 degrees. If we subtract 55 from both sides, the measure of angle 4 will equal 125. The other angles that have a measure of 125 are angle 2, because it is vertical to angle 4, angle 8 because it is corresponding to angle 4, and angle 6 because it is an alter alternate exterior angle to angle 4. We can use the corresponding angles postulate to prove other angle relationships. If you have a look at theorem 3-1, the alternate interior angles theorem, it says if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Since angle 4 and angle 6 are alternate interior angles, they are congruent. Since angle 3 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles, they are congruent. Now let's look at the same side interior angles theorem. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. Since angle 3 and angle 6 are same side interior, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 will equal 180. Since angle 4 and angle 5 are same side interior angles, the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 will equal 180. Let's have a little fun and prove the alternate interior angles theorem. Let's start with line L being parallel to line M because it is given. Since we want to prove that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, Let's look at the relationship between angle 2 and angle 6. Since they are corresponding angles, they are congruent. Next, we know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because they are vertical angles. And finally, because both angle 6 and angle 4 are congruent to angle 2, they are congruent to each other by the transitive property of congruence. So by proving that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, you have proven the alternate interior angles theorem. In example 2, we will prove an angle relationship. Let's look at the given. Here, 
line A is parallel to line B. And we are asked to prove that angle 1 and angle 8 are supplementary. Let's start with the given information. Line A is parallel to line B because it is given. Now, let's look at angle 1 and angle 5. They're congruent because of the corresponding angles postulate. Next, the measure of angle 1 will equal the measure of angle 5 because congruent angles always have equal measures. In step 4, let's look at angle 5 and angle 8 being supplementary because angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. In step 5, the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 8 will equal 180. That is the definition of supplementary. Since the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 5, we can substitute angle 1's measure into this equation. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 8 will equal 180. And finally, angle 1 and angle 8 are supplementary by the definition of supplementary. Pause the video and do you try number 2. Let's start with the given. Line A is parallel to line B. For step 2, angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 because they are corresponding angles. For step 3, angle 5 is congruent to angle 7 because of the vertical angles theorem. For step 4, since both angle 1 and angle 7 are congruent to angle 5, Angle 1 is congruent to angle 7 by the transitive property of congruence. In the diagram for example 2 shown here, angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles. In U try number 2, you prove the alternate exterior angle theorem before I even showed it to you. Let's have a look at it. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. Since angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles, they are congruent. Since angle 2 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles, they are also congruent. If you know the measure of just one angle formed by two parallel lines in a transversal, you can use the theorems and the postulates to find the measure of every other angle. It's so easy. In example 3, we're going to find measures of angles. What are the measures of angle 3? and angle 4. Which theorem or postulate justifies each answer? Since line P is parallel to line Q, angle 3 and the 105 degree angle are alternate interior angles, which makes them congruent. So the measure of angle 3 equals 105. Since the measure of angle 4 and the 105 degree angle are same side interior angles and line L is parallel to line M, I know that the measure of angle 4 plus 105 will equal 180. If I subtract 105 from both sides, the measure of angle 4 will equal 75. This is by the same side interior angles theorem. Now pause the video and do you try number 3. The measure of angle 1 is equal to 75 because angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate interior angles. The measure of angle 2 is 75 because angle 2 and angle 1 are vertical angles or you can use the corresponding angles postulate and angle 2 is corresponding to angle 4. The measure of angle 5 is 105 because angle 5 is corresponding to the 105 degree angle. The measure of angle 6 is 105 because angle 6 is an alternate interior angle with the 105 degree angle. The measure of angle 7 is 105 degrees because angle 7 is corresponding to angle 3 or angle 7 is vertical to the 105 degree angle. Angle 8 is 105 because angle 8 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles or you can use the corresponding angles postulate angle 6 is corresponding to angle 8. In example 4 we're going to find an angle measure. We need to combine our theorems and postulates with our knowledge of algebra to find the angle measure. Let's find the value of y. If we look 
since these two lines are parallel, I know that this angle and this 80 degree angle are going to be supplementary since they're same side interior angles. The angle on the left has a measure of 40 plus y. If I add that to the 80 degree angle, I will get a measure of 180. If I combine like terms on the left, y plus 120 will equal 180. By the subtraction property of equality, y will equal 60. I can check this by plugging 60 back into my original equation. Since 40 plus 60 is 100, and 100 plus 80 equals 180, we know that we solve for y correctly. Pause the video and do you try number 4. For part A, we want to find the values of x and y. Notice these lines are parallel, which means these two angles are same side interior, meaning 2x plus x minus 12 will equal 180. Use the distributive property to combine like terms to get 3x minus 12 equals 180. Next, let's use the addition property of equality to get 3x equal to 192. Finally, we'll use the division property of equality and get x equal to 64. Now, let's do the same thing over here. 3y plus y plus 20 will equal 180 because these two angles our same side interior angle. Use the distributive property to get 4y plus 20 equals 180. Now use the subtraction property of equality to get 4y equal to 160. The division property of equality will give equal to 40. For part b, in order to find the measures of the four angles in the figures, we'll want to substitute 64 for x and 40 for y. So the measure of this angle is 128 degrees and the measure of this angle is 52 degrees. Remember these two angles are same side interior angles so they should have a sum of 180. Since 128 plus 52 is 180 we know we're correct. The measure of this angle is 120 degrees and the measure of this angle is 60 degrees. Since these two angles are same side interior angles, they are supplementary. Since 120 plus 60 equals 180, we know we are correct. Now take what you've learned from the lesson and complete the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers. If there are any questions you aren't sure about, please remember to ask me tomorrow in class. Go ahead and try the challenge. I know you can do it. Now that we're finished, Look over the learning goal again and go back over the scale. See if you've improved from where you were when you started the lesson.